To a human, everything is a weapon if survival demands it. Desperate improvisation is humanity's deadliest trait. Philip Burns gripped the mop handle tightly as blaster bolts sizzled past his head. The remote space outpost shook violently, its hull breached by the merciless Zindi assault. Smoke filled the corridors. Alarms blared. Philip's fellow soldiers lay dead around him, but he pushed forward, scooping up a shard of shrapnel to use as a crude dagger. The enemy had smashed through the outer defenses with overwhelming force, vicious reptilian warriors eager to slaughter and enslave. But they hadn't counted on the tenacity of the outpost's human defenders. Even in the face of certain defeat, Philip and his comrades fought like demons, turning tools into clubs, debris into shields, and their own bodies into battering rams. They made the Zindi pay in blood for every inch of ground. As the last bulkhead collapsed, Philip knew it was over. He sprinted for the escape pods, a savage Zindi war cry ringing in his ears. He hurled his improvised weapons at the pursuers, buying precious seconds. Diving into a pod, he slammed the launch button. The tiny craft blasted free, the outpost exploding into a fireball behind it. Philip sagged back in his seat, bleeding from a dozen wounds, as the pod spun out into space. If he could just reach friendly territory, humanity would learn of this unprovoked attack. They could prepare. They would avenge this massacre. He never got the chance. A vast Zindi warship snared his pod in a tractor beam, reeling it in like a hooked fish. Philip was roughly dragged before the ship's commander, a massive reptilian brute named Orion. The warlord's eyes blazed with anger. One human, alone, killed twenty-six of my warriors? Orion snarled in disbelief. Impossible! How? What sorcery do your kind possess? Philip spat blood onto the deck. No sorcery, he rasped. Just guts. Humans are survivors, warriors. We're smart and stubborn. Push us hard enough, and we'll turn anything into a weapon to keep fighting. Rocks, wires, our own bones. Doesn't matter. If it can break your skull, it's good enough. Orion scoffed. Bold words, ape. You exaggerate. Such pitiful things as humans cannot fight the Zindi and live. Philip glared back defiantly. Try us. Orion considered for a long moment. Then he smiled, a wicked gleam in his eyes. You want to fight, human? Good. You shall have one. The warlord smashed a fist on a control panel. Set course for homeworld. This fool will face our greatest champions in the arena, in single combat. I will make an example of him before the galaxy. All will witness the Zindi triumph over humanity. Philip tensed, knowing his fate was sealed. The Zindi would force him to battle for their sick amusement. But in that moment, he swore an oath. Live or die, he would show these arrogant aliens the unbreakable spirit of humanity. He would prove that a human with nothing but scrap and bones was still the most dangerous soldier in the universe. The warship descended through the acid yellow skies of the Zindi homeworld. The arena loomed ahead, an immense coliseum packed with baying spectators. They howled for blood. Armed guards shoved Philip into the arena. The sandy ground was stained with dark splotches. Bones littered the edges. Before him stood a hulking reptilian brute, clad in spiked armor, wielding a vicious battle axe. The crowds roared their approval. A guard thrust something into Philip's hands, a broken broomstick and a rusted bucket. Orion's mocking laughter boomed from the stands. Fight, human, for the glory of the Zindi. Philip slowly looked down at the weapons he'd been given. Then, with iron resolve, he raised his head and stared at his foe. The Zindi champion bellowed and charged, axe held high. This was it. The battle was horribly mismatched. Philip knew his chances were slim, but slim was enough. Humanity's fate hung in the balance. These vicious aliens had to be shown that mankind would never kneel. He gripped stick and bucket, and with a roar of defiance, Philip Burns sprinted across the blood-soaked sand to meet his enemy head-on. The Zindi warrior bellowed as he thundered across the arena, his battle-axe poised to split Philip's skull. The human stood his ground, eyes locked on the incoming colossus. At the last second, just as the axe scythed down, Philip lunged aside. 
The axe slammed into the sand, burying itself to the haft. Philip wasted no time. He spun and smashed the broomstick across the Zindi's scaly face with a satisfying crack. Wooden shards exploded everywhere. The warrior staggered back, momentarily stunned. Philip pressed the attack, ramming the bucket down over the Zindi's elongated head. The rusted metal rang like a gong. Blinded and enraged, the warrior roared, swinging his axe in wild arcs. Philip bobbed and weaved desperately between the deadly strokes, the axe whistling past his face. The crowd watched in astonished silence as the human deftly evaded the onslaught that should have cut him to ribbons. Philip caught a glint of light off the warrior's armor, a gap at the back of the knee. He scooped up a jagged shard of broomstick and dove between the Zindi's trunk-like legs. With a vicious stab, he rammed the wooden stake deep into the unprotected joint. The Zindi screamed, his crippled leg folded and he crashed face first into the sand. The battle axe spun from his grasp. In a flash, Philip snatched up the fallen axe. He flipped it in his hands, gripping the heavy shaft. The Zindi struggled to rise, disoriented. Philip didn't hesitate. He brought the blunt backside of the axe head smashing down on the back of the warrior's skull. Bone crunched sickeningly. The Zindi went limp, face down in a growing pool of blood. For a long moment, there was no sound but Philip's ragged breathing. Then, slowly, he turned to the stupefied audience. He thrust the gory axe above his head and roared his defiance, his triumph. The human had done the impossible. He had slain the Zindi champion with nothing but a bucket and a broken stick. High above, Orion shot to his feet, eyes blazing with disbelief and fury. Seize him, the warlord bellowed. The human cheated, sorcery, trickery. Throw him in the cells. Armed guards swarmed the arena, hammering Philip to the ground. He was dragged away in chains and hurled into a filthy stone cell. He lay on the damp floor, bruised and bloody, but filled with grim satisfaction. He'd shown the Zindi that day what humanity was truly capable of. A rustling in the shadows made Philip tense. A figure emerged from the darkness, a hunched hooded form. Philip scrambled up, fists clenched, ready for anything. Peace, friend, the figure said, pushing back his hood. He was human, with a grizzled beard and piercing blue eyes. I mean you no harm. I am Dezu, a captive like yourself. Philip relaxed fractionally. I'm Philip. How long have you been here? Too long, Dezu sighed. But today, you gave me something I haven't felt in years. Hope. He stepped closer, voice lowering. What you did in the arena was remarkable. Such resourcefulness. Such tenacity. It's exactly what we need. Need for what? Philip asked warily. To stop the Zindi. To save humanity. The zoo glanced around, then leaned in close. Orion has a new weapon. Something terrible. Powerful enough to threaten every human colony within a hundred light years. But he's keeping the plans locked away. Stealing them may be our only hope. Philip frowned. Why tell me? Isn't it obvious? Look what you did with a bucket. Imagine what you could do if we worked together. Dezu held out a hand. Help me destroy this weapon. Help me get these plans. We can do this. Philip hesitated only a moment before clasping the offered hand. When do we start? Philip and Dezu huddled in the dimly lit cell voices low as they hatched their plan. We need to get the guards in here, Philip whispered. Then we take them out fast and quiet. Dezu nodded, a glint in his eye. I'll start it. You finish it. Without warning, Dezu shoved Philip hard. You bastard, he shouted. I'll kill you. Philip stumbled back, then lunged at Dezu with a convincing roar. They grappled and thrashed, kicking up dust and bellowing threats. Two shindy guards burst in, weapons raised. Break it up, you! Philip spun, driving his sharpened spoon handle deep into the first guard's throat. Blood sprayed as the Cindy dropped, gurgling. Dezu snatched up a loose piece of armor plating and smashed it into the second guard's face with a sickening crunch. Seconds later, the human stood over two dead Zindi, panting heavily. Nice acting! Philip said, stripping the guards of their armor and weapons. 
You too, Dazu replied. Now comes the hard part. Disguised as Zindi, they slipped out of the cell block. Philip's heart raced as they strode past other guards, praying their ruse would hold. They rounded a corner and came face to face with a Zindi patrol. Philip's mind raced. He grabbed a handful of pens from a nearby desk and jammed them between his fingers like claws. As the patrol leader opened his mouth to speak, Philip lunged, driving the makeshift weapon into the Zindi's eye socket. Dezu reacted instantly, whipping his belt around another guard's throat and yanking tight. Philip snatched up a bottle of cleaning fluid and sprayed it into the faces of the remaining Zindi. They howled in pain, clawing at their eyes. This way, Dezu hissed, dragging Philip down a side corridor. They sprinted through the twisting passages of the Zindi base, dispatching isolated guards with brutal efficiency. Philip fashioned a crude garrote from computer wiring, silently taking down a sentry. He cobbled together a gas bomb using cleaning chemicals and detonated it to clear a heavily guarded junction. Finally, they reached the weapons lab. Dezu's fingers flew over the alien console while Philip stood watch, every nerve on edge. I've got it, Dezu exclaimed. The schematics, they're... Alarms shrieked to life, red lights bathing the lab in a hellish glow. Zindi voices echoed down the corridor, growing closer. Shit! Philip grabbed a nearby fire extinguisher as the first wave of soldiers burst in. He triggered the nozzle, blasting the Zindi with a freezing cloud of chemicals. They reeled back, choking and blind. How much longer? Philip shouted over the din. Almost there, Dezu called back. Just a few more seconds. Philip hurled the empty extinguisher, catching a Zindi in the face. He snatched up a plasma welder and thumbed it to life the cutting beam slicing through armor and flesh alike. Got it! Dezu cried triumphantly, pocketing a data crystal. Philip grabbed a bundle of fuel cells, frantically wiring them together. This way! he yelled, leading Dezu through the chaos towards the landing bay. They fought their way through waves of Cindy, Philip wielding the plasma welder like a sword of fire. Dezu provided covering fire with a stolen blaster as they reached a sleek Cindy shuttle. Can you fly this thing? Dezu asked as they clambered aboard. We're about to find out, Philip growled, studying the alien controls. The shuttle roared to life, lurching into the air as Philip wrestled with the unfamiliar systems. They burst out of the landing bay in a hail of weapons fire. Philip sent the shuttle into a stomach-churning dive, skimming between towering shindy structures. Pursuit craft screamed after them, energy bolts sizzling past the cockpit. We can't outrun them, Dezu shouted, gripping his seat as Philip banked hard around a gleaming spire. Philip's eyes locked onto Orion's massive command ship looming ahead. A crazy idea formed in his mind. Hold on to something, he yelled, ramming the throttle forward. The shuttle rocketed straight towards the command ship's bridge. At the last possible second, Philip wrenched the controls. They veered away as he punched the release for his jerry-rigged bomb. The volatile fuel cells streaked towards the command ship's exposed engine ports. The resulting explosion lit up the sky. Orion's ship listed drunkenly, flames gouting from its stern. It plummeted toward the city below, secondary explosions tearing it apart. Philip didn't wait to admire his handiwork. He pushed the stolen shuttle to its limits, clawing for altitude. They broke atmosphere, the inky blackness of space opening up before them. Plot a course through that nebula, Philip ordered, gesturing at a roiling mass of cosmic gas. It should mask our trail. Dezu's fingers danced over the navigation console. The shuttle shuddered as its warp drive engaged, hurtling them into the swirling chaos of the nebula. Philip sagged in his chair, exhaustion finally catching up to him. He turned to Dezu with a weary grin. If we make it back alive, first round's on me, he said, assuming I can figure out how to weaponize the bottle. Philip barely finished his sentence when alarms blared through the shuttle. Warning lights flashed across the console as the ship lurched violently. We're dropping out of warp, Dezu shouted, fingers flying over the controls. Engine failure! The stars outside snapped back into focus as the shuttle tumbled end over end. Philip gripped his chair, fighting waves of nausea. Status report. Bad, Dezu growled. We're venting atmosphere. 
Life support's failing, and we're drifting into a star system. Philip scanned the readouts. There, third planet, looks habitable. Can we make it? Dezu's face was grim. Maybe, if we don't burn up on entry. They limped towards the planet, coaxing every ounce of power from the failing engines. As they hit the upper atmosphere, the shuttle began to glow red hot. Maneuvering thrusters, Philip yelled. Use them to bleed off speed. The thrusters sputtered to life, slowing their descent. But it wasn't enough. Alarms screamed as the heat continued to build. We're going to break apart, Dezu shouted. Philip's mind raced. The magnetic shielding, reroute all auxiliary power. Dessou banged his hand onto the controls. For a moment, nothing happened. Then the ship groaned as an invisible barrier formed around it, pushing back against the intense heat. It worked, for about ten seconds. Then every system on the shuttle exploded in a shower of sparks. Brace for impact, Philip roared as the ground rushed up to meet them. The shuttle slammed into rocky terrain with bone-jarring force. Metal screamed as it tore apart. Philip's head whipped forward, then back. Everything went black. He came to with Dezu dragging him from the wreckage. Smoke billowed from the shattered hull as Philip stumbled to his feet. The data drive? Dezu patted his pocket. Safe. Figures appeared on the horizon. Human security forces, weapons drawn, closing fast. Don't shoot, Philip called, raising his hands. We're friendlies. The security team surrounded them. Philip flashed his military ID. Listen, we need immediate evac to a secure facility. We've got vital intel on a Zindi superweapon. Minutes later, they were speeding across the rocky terrain in an armored personnel carrier. Philip relayed their story to wide-eyed soldiers. Command, this is Convoy Actual, the squad leader radioed. We have confirmed intel on a Zindi Doomsday device. Repeat, Zindi superweapon. An explosion rocked the vehicle. Gunfire erupted outside. Ambush! Someone shouted. Philip grabbed a nearby rifle. Dazu, stay down. Protect that drive. He peered out a viewport. Ragged-looking humans in mining gear were attacking the convoy. Who the hell are these guys? Philip yelled over the din. Rogue colonists! The squad leader shouted back. Led by a nutjob named Harris. They've gone off the deep end. Philip's mind raced. He spotted a crate of mining charges. Cover me! He snatched up the explosives and a length of chain. While the soldiers laid down suppressing fire, Philip rigged the charges into crude grenades. Fire in the hole! He yelled, hurling his creations at the attackers. The blasts sent men flying. But more kept coming. Philip saw a huge man, Harris, he guessed, leading the charge. Dezu! Philip called. I need a distraction. His friend nodded, grabbing a hydraulic ram. He fired it at the ground, kicking up a massive dust cloud. Philip used the cover to close with Harris. The big man swung a pickaxe, narrowly missing Philip's head. Philip ducked and weaved, looking for an opening. There, a plutonium fuel rod, lying in the dirt. Philip snatched it up just as Harris attacked again. Philip used the rod to deflect the pickaxe, then drove his knee into Harris's gut. The former miner doubled over. Philip brought the fuel rod down on his back. Harris crumpled. Seeing their leader fall, the remaining attackers scattered or surrendered. As the dust settled, Philip turned to the stunned security team. You wanted to see what one human could do, he said grimly. Imagine if the Zindi get their weapon operational. We need to move. Now. The military transport shuddered as it broke atmosphere, leaving the chaos of the mining colony behind. Philip slumped in his seat, adrenaline ebbing away. He glanced at Dizu, who clutched the precious data drive containing the Zindi superweapon schematics. We did it, Philip breathed, still scarcely believing their escape. Dezu nodded grimly. Now comes the hard part. Hours later, they stood before a panel of grim-faced fleet officers. Admiral Nguyen, a stocky woman with iron-gray hair, paced as she absorbed their report. Show me, she ordered. Dezu inserted the drive into a holographic projector. Schematics flickered to life, filling the air with ghostly blueprints. Nguyen's eyes widened as she took in the scale of the weapon. Mother of God, 
she whispered. It's worse than we thought. Philip stepped forward, pointing to key areas of the hologram. The main power core is here. Shielding is heaviest around these sections. And this? This is where Orion keeps the control systems. He walked the officers through the layout, recalling every detail of their harrowing escape. Dezu chimed in with technical specifications, rattling off shield frequencies and security protocols. Nguyen's fingers flew across a data pad as she formulated a plan. We need to hit them hard and fast, a small team in and out before they know what hit them. Philip exchanged a glance with Dezu. We volunteer, they said in unison. Nguyen shook her head. I need you for something even more crucial. Follow me. She led them to a hangar bay where two sleek ships waited. One was a dart-like fighter, its hull shimmering with stealth plating. The other was larger, filled with weapon ports. Meet the Havoc and the Rogue, Nguyen said. Bleeding-edge stealth tech. You'll use them to punch through Zindi defenses and run interference while our strike team does their job. Philip ran a hand along the Havoc's smooth hull. When do we leave? Now. The next few hours were a blur of preparations. Philip familiarized himself with the Havoc systems while Dezu loaded the rogue with enough firepower to level a small moon. As they made final checks, Nguyen addressed the assembled strike force. This is a one-way trip, people. No extraction, no cavalry coming to save you. If we fail, billions die. Questions? Silence. Then Godspeed. Philip settled into the Havoc's cockpit, systems humming to life around him. He glanced at Dazu's face on the comm screen. Just like old times, eh? Dazu grinned. Let's hope we do better than last time. They slipped out of the hangar, cloaking fields engaging. The Zindi system loomed ahead, a maze of sensor nets and automated defenses. Philip's hands danced across the controls, guiding them through gaps in the coverage. They were nearly in position when proximity alarms shrieked. Philip's blood ran cold as a massive silhouette purposed on his sensors. Dezu, he hissed. You seeing this? Orion's command ship, Dezu confirmed. Right where we don't want it. Philip's mind raced. Everything hinged on their next move. He opened a secure channel to Dezu, a faint grin tugging at his lips despite the dire situation. Looks like an old friend is first in line for the welcoming party. Dezu's reply was instant, his voice hard with perseverance. Lead the way. This time we bring the entire house down on his head. Philip's hands tightened on the controls. They accelerated toward Orion's trap, ready to unleash hell. Whatever happened next, one thing was certain. The fate of humanity would be decided here and now. Philip's hands flew across the Havoc's controls as he and Dezu roared towards Orion's command ship. Warning lights flashed red across the cockpit as the cloaking drive sputtered and died. We're exposed, Philip barked into the comm. Dezu, break right on my mark. The Zindi vessel loomed before them, its massive bulk suddenly alive with weapons fire. Philip yanked the Havoc into a steep dive, skimming mere meters from the enemy hull. His thumb jammed down on the firing stud, pulsed laser fire erupting from the Havoc's nose. The beams sliced through Orion's maneuvering thrusters. Metal vaporized instantly, leaving gaping wounds. The command ship lurched, caught in an uncontrolled spin. Philip allowed himself a grim smile, but it vanished as his sensors screamed. A swarm of Zindi strike fighters pounced, filling space with searing neutron bolts. The havoc bucked as hits slammed home. Countermeasures now, Philip growled, fingers dancing across the weapons panel. A cloud of drones spewed from the havoc's rear, their electronic signatures mimicking his ship. He wrenched the stick hard, sending the havoc into a dizzying corkscrew. G-forces crushed him into his seat as debris from Orion's ship whipped past the canopy. Behind him, Zindi fighters plowed into the expanding cloud of wreckage and drones. Fireballs blossomed as ships hit tripwire mines Philip had scattered in his wake. He allowed himself a breath before checking his tactical display. Dezu's signal pulsed strong as the rogue unleashed hell on a Zindi power station. Brilliant flashes lit up the planet's nightside as antimatter warheads found their mark. Seconds later, the entire hemisphere went dark. Ground teams moving in, 
Dazu reported, his voice tense. We need to keep these bastards busy. Philip opened his mouth to reply when proximity alarms shrieked. His eyes widened as new contacts swarmed his display. Orion's back online! Evasive maneuvers! He jettisoned the Havoc's warp nacelles, their engine flares temporarily blinding enemy sensors. In that split second, Philip activated the polarized hull plating, catching a full salvo of Zindi photon torpedoes. Sweat beaded on his forehead as he coaxed every ounce of power from the overtaxed systems. The captured energy built to impossible levels, contained only by the ship's magnetic fields. With a thought and the brush of a fingertip, Philip released the pent-up fury. A wall of superheated plasma smashed into Orion's command ship, shattering viewports and wreaking havoc on external sensors. The Zindi vessel's weapons began firing wildly. Its targeting systems scrambled. Philip watched in astonishment as Orion's own blasts tore into nearby facilities. Warning klaxons blared through the Havoc's cockpit. Philip's eyes darted across failing system readouts. Dezu! The Havoc's done for! I need extraction! Negative, Dezu shouted back. I'm not detecting your signal. Wait, what the hell? Philip's fingers danced across the transporter controls, inputting coordinates far beyond the battle zone. A feral grin spread across his face as he engaged the final sequence. See you on the other side, old friend, he said. The Havoc's antimatter reactor ejected, tumbling towards the heart of the Zindi fleet. As Philip's body began to dematerialize, he caught a glimpse of impossibly bright light blooming outside the viewports. Then, everything went white. White hot light seared Philip's retinas as the antimatter reactor detonated. His body tingled, atoms buzzing as the transporter beam whisked him away. Darkness engulfed him. He woke to the acrid stench of burnt circuitry. Smoke stung his nostrils. Philip's eyes fluttered open, struggling to focus. A figure in an environmental suit loomed over him. Got a live one, the salvage tech shouted. Radiation level's critical. Get him to decon now. Rough hands hauled Philip from the Havoc's wreckage. His legs buckled as he tried to stand. Through the haze, he glimpsed Dazu being extracted from the rogue's twisted hull. D Dazus, Philip croaked. Save your strength, a medic barked, shoving an oxygen mask over Philip's face. The world spun as they rushed him onto a waiting shuttle. Alarms blared. Philip's skin crawled, cells rebelling against the radiation poisoning. He fought to stay conscious as the shuttle rocketed towards a nearby medical frigate. Hours later, Philip lay on a bio bed, tubes snaking from his arms. The decontamination process left him weak but lucid. Dezu occupied the adjacent bed, his scales pale but intact. Admiral Nguyen strode in, her face a mask of stone. Report. Philip's voice rasped as he recounted their mission. Superweapon. Destroyed. Zindi leadership. In chaos. Nguyen nodded her eyes softening a fraction. You've dealt them a crippling blow, but I'm afraid it's just the beginning. She activated a holographic display, filling the air with star charts. Red markers swarmed outward from the devastated Zindi system. Their ships are scattering across the galaxy, Nguyen explained, making contact with old allies, striking at vulnerable outposts. We've intercepted transmissions. They're calling for holy war against humanity. Philip struggled to sit up. But why? We defended ourselves, nothing more. Nguyen's lips thinned. Intercepted intelligence paints a grim picture. The Zindi believe in some sort of... cosmic destiny. That humanity must be wiped out for the natural order to be restored. She tapped a control, bringing up images of alien worlds. We're seeing increased activity at known Zindi staging areas. They're consolidating their forces, gathering allies. Human colonies are already under attack. Philip exchanged a look with Dezu. What's our next move? Nguyen's eyes hardened. As soon as you're cleared for duty, I'm promoting you to commander. You'll lead Nova Black Ops, unconventional warfare, behind enemy lines. She pulled up schematics of a massive shipyard. Your first target, a Zindi facility in the Trappist system. 
They're outfitting an armada for a push into core human space. Your job is to cripple it before they can launch. Philip studied the defenses, mind racing. He pointed to a cluster of cargo lanes. There, we hijack an incoming hauler, rig it with cyclonuclear charges, steer it right into their docking berths. Guyan raised an eyebrow. Risky. But effective, Dezu chimed in. I can modify the hauler's systems to mask the explosive signature. The Admiral nodded slowly. Very well. You have 48 hours to prep. I suggest you use them wisely. As she turned to leave, Philip called out, Admiral, what happens if we fail? Guyan paused at the door. Then God help us all. Philip sank back onto the bio bed, muscles aching. He glanced at Dezeus, saw the same mix of exhaustion and purpose in his friend's eyes. Ready for another round? Philip asked. Dezeus' mandibles clicked in a grim smile. Always. They had two days to plan their next move. Beyond that lay only the looming shadow of interstellar war. Philip and Dezu crouched in the cramped cargo hauler, sweat beating under their stolen environmental suits. The ship's hull creaked as Dezu input the final calculations. Overload sequence primed, Dezu reported, his mandibles clicking softly. We're locked on course. Philip nodded, double-checking the seals on his suit. Launch in three, two, one. With a lurch, the unmanned hauler shot forward. Through the viewports, Philip watched the massive Zindi shipyards grow larger. Skeletal frames of half-built warships loomed against the starfield. Thirty seconds to impact, Dezu announced. Philip's grip tightened on his scavenged Zindi pulse rifle. The hauler sailed past the first line of automated defenses. Alarms blared as the shipyard systems finally registered the threat. Too late, Philip muttered. A blinding flash erupted as the hauler slammed into the central docking hub. Even through the reactor room's shielding, Philip felt the ship buck violently. The viewport cracked, then shattered as a wall of superheated plasma engulfed them. For endless seconds, there was only searing light and the screech of tortured metal. When Philip's vision cleared, he gaped at the devastation. Cindy capital ships drifted in pieces, their hulls glowing cherry red. Unfinished cruisers had simply vaporized. Now, Philip shouted. He and Dezu sprinted to the waiting life pod. As the hauler's structural integrity failed, they blasted free. Philip gritted his teeth as G-forces slammed him back. Through the pod's tiny viewport, he spotted their target, a massive Zindi command ship, its bridge spires rising above the carnage. Brace for impact, Dezu warned. The life pod plowed into the command ship's upper decks. Philip's head snapped forward, his helmet cracking against the bulkhead. Dazed, he fumbled with the airlock controls. Move, Dazu hissed, shoving past him. They burst onto the bridge, weapons raised. Stunned, Zindi officers scrambled for cover. Philip's rifle spat purple energy bolts, cutting down the nearest alien. Dazu unleashed a swarm of reprogrammed hunter-seekers, filling the air with mechanical chittering. As the drones pursued fleeing crew members, Philip sprinted to the reactor controls. His fingers flew across alien interfaces, initiating an unstoppable chain reaction. Klaxons wailed as plasma eruptions tore through the ship. Bridge secured, Dezu reported, standing over the Zindi Admiral's corpse, downloading tactical data now. Philip nodded already punching in the extraction code. Outside, silent flashes lit up the void as human stealth bombers obliterated what remained of the shipyards. Seconds later, they were aboard a waiting shuttle, rocketing away from the devastation. Philip peeled off his cracked helmet, sucking in deep breaths of filtered air. He turned to Dezu, a savage grin spreading across his face. Remind me to send the Zindi a thank you basket, he said for providing such ample bomb-making materials. Dezu's mandibles twitched in what passed for a smile. I'm sure they'll appreciate the gesture. The shuttle accelerated to warp, leaving behind a graveyard of shattered Zindi dreams. The shuttle's engines cooled as Philip and Dezu approached the captured Zindi scout ship. Smoke still billowed from the shipyard's wreckage, casting an eerie glow against the starfield. Philip's fingers flew across the alien controls, 
interfacing with unfamiliar systems. Navigational data secured, Dazu announced, his mandibles clicking as he worked. Encrypted, but breakable. Philip nodded, guiding the scout ship away from the devastation. Let's see what secrets our Zindi friends have been keeping. Hours later, they pored over the decrypted data. A star map flickered to life, highlighting a remote system. Izar, Philip murmured, studying the tactical overlay. Looks like our scattered enemies are gathering for round two. Dezu's compound eyes narrowed. A formidable force. We must act swiftly. Back aboard the human flagship, Philip stood before Admiral Nguyen, outlining his audacious plan. We use their own ship against them, a Trojan horse right into the heart of their staging area. Nguyen's face remained impassive. And if you're discovered... Then we die, Philip said simply, but not before we cripple their invasion force. Nguyen nodded slowly. Very well, Commander. You have a go. Days later, the captured scout ship dropped out of warp near Izar. Philip's hands tightened on the controls as a massive Zindi battle station loomed before them. Unidentified vessel. Transmit authorization codes. A harsh voice crackled over the comms. Philip exchanged a glance with Dezu, who nodded. Transmitting now. Apologies for the delay. We had a... Complication with our cargo. Tense seconds passed. Finally. Confirmed. Proceed to docking bay 7. As they approached, Philip activated the ship's waste venting systems. Thick, green vapor began spewing from the hull. Docking control, we have a critical reactor leak, Philip shouted into the comm. Request immediate quarantine and decon teams. Alarms blared across the station. Philip watched Zindi crews scrambling in panic, completely unaware of the true threat. Now, Philip barked. Dezu activated the stealth field projector. Shimmering energy enveloped the ship, masking the egress tubes from which Nova Commandos now emerged. Philip led the charge, his team moving with practice precision. They raced through corridors, disabling security systems and planting charges. Philip's rifle spat silent death dropping Zindi soldiers before they could raise the alarm. Reactor control secured. Sergeant Chen's voice crackled in Philip's earpiece. Scuttling protocols neutralized. Copy that, Philip replied. Dezu, status on the EMP strikes? A series of distant thuds answered his question. Lights flickered and died across the station. Communications and targeting arrays disabled, Dezu confirmed. We have them blind and mute. Philip nodded grimly. All teams converge on the central bunker. It's time to pay the Zindi leadership a visit. They breached the bunker's outer defenses with brutal efficiency. Philip led the final assault, hurling rubber grenades into the command center. The non-lethal explosions were followed by the ear-piercing shriek of overloaded Zindi communicators. When the smoke cleared, stunned Zindi officers lay scattered across the floor. Philip strode forward his weapon trained on the rebel warlord struggling to rise. I believe, Philip said coldly, we have some questions for you. The interrogations were swift and merciless. Nova's intelligence officers extracted crucial information about the Cindy battle plans, including their intended use of horrific weapons against human worlds. Philip's blood ran cold as he learned of the Guardians of Entropy and their sinister alliance. The threat was far greater than they had imagined. As they prepared to leave the captured station, Philip outlined his daring strategy to Admiral Nguyen via encrypted channel. We feed them false intel, he explained. Make them think Sewell is vulnerable. When they commit their forces, we spring the trap. Nguyen's holographic image flickered. It's risky, Commander, but it might be our best shot. Make it happen. Aboard a nondescript freighter, Nova Black Ops returned to human space. Philip watched as Dezu transmitted carefully crafted lies through compromised subspace relays. And now, Philip said softly, we wait. They didn't have to wait long. Within days, long-range sensors detected the massive Zindi Armada altering course, straight for Earth. Final objective, Philip briefed his team as they approached the Zindi comm station at Tau Arigai. We take this facility. We cut off the Zindi's ability to coordinate their attack. 
he turned to Dezu, ready to plant some surprises for our scaly friends. Dezux's mandibles clicked in anticipation, always. They stormed the station with cold precision. Philip led the assault, his team clearing room after room. Micromines were swiftly planted in critical systems. As the last Zindi defender fell, Philip received the transmission he'd been waiting for. The Zindi fleet had engaged Earth's defenses and walked right into Nguyen's trap. With a savage grin, Philip entered the deactivation codes. Across the battlefield, Zindi ships suddenly found themselves without communications or coordination. Now, Philip said softly, watching the tactical display as human forces tore into the confused enemy, we finish this. The acrid stench of burning metal and ozone filled Philip's nostrils as he led his team through the twisted corridors of Orion's former command ship. Emergency lights flickered, casting eerie shadows across the debris-strewn deck. Life signs detected, a soldier reported, her scanner blinking urgently. Lower deck, section 7. Philip's heart raced as they descended deeper into the ship's bowels. The deck plates groaned beneath their feet, the hull's integrity compromised by the ferocious battle. They found Dezu pinned beneath a fallen bulkhead, green blood pooling around his crushed lower body. His mandibles twitched weakly as Philip knelt beside him. Hang on, old friend, Philip said, gripping Dezu's hand. We're getting you out of here. Dezu's compound eyes struggled to focus. Philip, the schematics. Take them and go. Not a chance, Philip growled, motioning for his team to set up emergency life support. Remember our first escape from Orion's arena? As the medics worked to stabilize Dezu, Philip recounted their daring breakout. You rigged those shock collars to overload. I've never seen Orion's goons run so fast. A wet chuckle escaped Dezu, followed by a hacking cough that spattered blood across his mandibles. We made quite the team. Suddenly, the ship shuddered violently. Warning klaxons blared as the deck tilted sharply. Commander, a panicked voice crackled over the comm. We're caught in Earth's gravity well. Hull integrity failing. Philip's blood ran cold as he saw the fear in his team's eyes. With grim grit, he activated the armored Medipod and carefully transferred Dezu inside. What are you doing? Dezu rasped. Saving your life, Philip replied, sealing the pod. One last time. He punched the ejection sequence, watching through a viewport as the pod arced away toward a distant recovery ship. The heat of atmospheric entry began to tear at the command ship's hull. Philip turned to face his team, their faces a mix of terror and acceptance. It's been an honor serving with you all, he said softly. As flames engulfed the bridge, Philip closed his eyes and thought of Dezu, hoping his friend would carry on their fight. Days later, Dezu awoke to the sterile white of a medical bay. Admiral Nguyen stood at his bedside, her face etched with fatigue and sorrow. Welcome back, Commander she said, her voice hoarse. Dezu struggled to sit up, his body racked with pain. Philip, the others? Nguyen shook her head slowly, placing a battered device on the bed. This is all we recovered, the Metapod's black box. With trembling hands, Dezu activated the playback. Philip's voice filled the room, calm despite the chaos in the background. Dezu, if you're hearing this, I'm sorry I couldn't make it out with you but I need you to keep fighting. You're the bravest damn human I've ever known, even if you weren't born one. Don't let those Zindi bastards win. For Earth. For all of us. Tears stung Dezu's eyes as the recording ended. Nguyen placed a hand on his shoulder. We've routed their main force, but it's not over, she said grimly. Zindi terror cells are hitting our colonies. We need you to lead Nova Black Ops and finish this fight. Dezu recoiled. More violence? Hasn't there been enough death? Nguyen's expression softened as she handed him a worn, blood-stained book. Philip's field manual. He always said a true human could turn anything into a weapon for freedom. Dezu ran his fingers over the tattered cover, remembering Philip's ingenuity and courage. He looked up at Nguyen, newfound persistence hardening his gaze. I'll do it, he said, for Philip, for humanity. Hours later, Dezu stood before a team of Nova operatives, 
his battle-scarred armor gleaming under the harsh lights of the briefing room. He held up Philip's manual, addressing the assembled soldiers. Our mission is clear, Dazu declared. We strike at the heart of the Zindi terror cell on Luna. We'll use every trick in this book and then some, because that's what humans do. We adapt, we overcome, we survive. He strode toward the waiting dropship, his team falling in behind him. As the engines roared to life, Dezu allowed himself a small, grim smile. Time to show these Zindi what happens when they push humanity too far, he muttered. You have reached the end of the story. If you enjoyed this story and want to support us, please leave a like and subscribe to our channel. And for every comment that says 88, I will heart every single one of them. Thank you for your time.